Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the uh, training for the, uh, the temp module on uh, the bus rapid transit. Today, we're going to be um, running you through the model um, on, on calculating the emissions reduction from bus rapid transit. Um, this is what we call the TIMP BRT module. Um, Clean Air Asia, together with partners such as ITDP, ADB, Cambridge Systematics, UNFJF, Veolia Environment, IGES, of course, UN Habitat, and World Bank, have developed the, these Excel-based, free-of-charge spreadsheet models, collectively called as Transport Emission Evaluation Model for Projects. You can call it TEAM, some call it TEM. TEM is actually an um, allegory for uh, temporary. So we're saying that these models are not your um, ultimate models that would give you the final results for your emission reduction savings calculations, but it's really more um, a, a means towards um, uh, guiding the, the, the calculations for the CO2 and for the other air pollutants as well. Later, you will see that uh, we have incorporated some of the pertinent co-benefits um, from these transportation projects, particularly for the BRT, um, which would uh, make the calculations more robust and uh, which would enable the calculations to look at the economic impacts as well as the social impacts. Um, we look at, uh, for example, safety, reduced fatalities, and of course, we look at the emissions. We look at the economic IRR and the, some of the financial indicators in this model. Once you download the file from the, uh, from the internet, um, you would see something like this. Uh, later, on, later on, I would be going through the different uh, sheets that are in the, the model and uh, run you through how we are going to calculate the emissions and uh, how we are going to do the inputs and what are the basic tips for us to be able to use this model. It's a relatively simple model that it is quite transparent. All the calculations are in one sheet. So users can actually go back and check um, whether the calculations are correct or if they have missed certain inputs that would lead to erroneous calculations in the uh, temp model. And uh, we're going to be going through the different sections of the tool. Uh, to give you an idea what goes into these sections and what are the important parameters to look at. So the uh, team BRT model would actually look like this. This is the home page. This is uh, your navigation uh, page for the full model. Um, for this certain model, for the team tools, you actually have two different levels of analysis that you can do. So the first one is the sketch analysis tool, and the other one is a full BRT model. Judging from the name itself, um, the sketch analysis tool would require less data than the full BRT model, but it's very rough in the sense that it uses default data um, at the large level to be able to come up with, for example, uh, tons reduction CO2 per kilometer of BRT built or per passenger kilometer that it serves. And also in terms of the, the results, the full model would give you a lot of different analysis, including some economic and uh, social benefits that you would get from the implementation or the construction of a BRT system. So let's start off with the, uh, the full BRT model. By the way, the, uh, the model is being run through macros, Excel macros. So as you can see here, I clicked one of the boxes. Um, all of these green boxes can be clicked, but Excel is currently telling me that we cannot run the macro because of the security settings. If you're running um, Microsoft Office, I think this is 2010, you would actually need to go to the uh, um, to the options 
and look for the thrust center under left panel here and uh, go through this box here, the thrust center settings and uh, I think this one, yeah. So in, in the uh, left panel again, you would see the macro setting and what you would like to do here is actually to enable all macros at least for this sheet and uh, click OK and uh, once again click OK and then you can actually Okay, so once you have the settings for the macros enabled for the sheet, uh, for the file, you can actually click on the screen boxes here uh, to navigate you through the different portions of the, the full model. And uh, as you can see here, you have different uh, colors for the cells. I'll be explaining that in a while. But you can see here, this is actually the home button. So going through the different parts of the tool, you can go back to your home page to be able to navigate uh, quite easily using that uh, icon there. So it, uh, it's the blue uh, house shape icon that you find at the left upper left corner of each of the sheet. Let me briefly explain to you how the color coding works for this model. So we have the basic color coding guide in uh, the, the sheet called color coding. So the sheets, um, the ones which are colored green are the ones wherein you have to input data. The sheets with the blue tabs in the other hand are the ones that would give you some of the results of the model. The sheets with the clear tabs are generally guides or calculation sheets which are not supposed to be edited. And the last one, the sheets with the black tabs are supposed to be hidden sheets and are not supposed to be edited as well. But for the purposes of our exercise, we've unhid all of these sheets just for transparency and for clarity in terms of all the elements that go into the calculations. Now, the same rules would actually apply to the input sheets. So the blue, uh, uh, the, the input cells, I mean. The blue cells are not supposed to be edited and they would normally contain labels, um, but the green ones are the ones which the users would have to input values on. The yellow ones, uh, it's a warning color that you would need to input something in that cell or in that row, but currently there are no values that are inputted. And the red ones, uh, again, these are warning cells. These indicate that uh, the sums which should have been 100 if you're taking percentages are not summing up to 100. And uh, these are some of the uh, features that were added from the previous versions of the TIMP uh, BRT model just to make it easier for users to input um, the, the parameters into the model. And aside from the home icon, you would get these two types of uh, icons as well. Uh, the D with the circle around it or a balloon around it, this would uh, lead you to suggested default values that you can use in the calculations if ever you don't have data. Um, this is one of the key advantages of using the TINT models that we actually have some default data that we suggest, although um, we always emphasize that uh, the users should use caution in using these data and should try their best to actually get local data or even borrow from similar projects or get from regional or national data if they can and uh, as much as possible 
limit the use of the default data just to improve the accuracy and the robustness of the calculations. And uh, you would also get this icon, a small eye uh, that's encircled in a blue circle. Um, if you can, you, you, you can click those cells and it actually give you some explanation of the required parameters um, in those cells. So later, I'll, I'll, uh, we'll take a look at some of the examples where in, there are some explanations that are embedded in the cells. Again, um, these were done to be able to make it easier for the users to input their data into the model. So back to the home page of the full model for the BRT uh, TIMP. So you would have here a lot of boxes. These boxes are actually clickable, and uh, they are um, categorized into different portions that you would need to fill up to be able to come up with the calculations for the emissions and for the other co-benefits as well for the BRT. Um, the first one here is the basic information. So you have the project name, um, location, if you want to put some details um, in there. You know, so the, these are open-ended uh, cells that uh, the users can, can input into to be able to um, have a better idea what the model actually contains. So you can put, you know, versions of the calculations here, or iteration number, uh, things like that. And uh, the base year, and uh, you would need to indicate the number of days in a year that the BRT is actually operating. Okay, so let's click one of these. Okay, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to be inputting um, data, draft data for the Bandung BRT that we have been working on. But uh, let me just uh, also give a caveat that these are draft values. Uh, some of the data are actually not yet available. And uh, uh, we're still trying to get some of the data for, for the uh, calculations. But um, given that limitation, it always also gives you an idea of the type of effort that you would actually need to be able to run these calculations. As much as possible, the, the, the Team PRT model was actually built to be able to minimize the amount and, uh, of uh, effort in terms of data collection and still result in uh, robust and reasonable values for the emissions calculations. So let me just uh, um, type some uh, details here. So, so let's just call it uh, Bandung BRT. So again, so as you input some of the uh, the values, it actually changes color. So it means that you've already uh, inputted values there, and you don't need to worry about them. Okay, let's just say this is version one, November 2013. And uh, you need to define the base year here. What the TIMP model does is that it takes three periods, the base year, intermediate year, and the horizon year. Default 20-year uh, data. So it automatically calculates the middle year and the last year for the calculation. So users only have to indicate what is the uh, base data, like uh, base year for the data. So let's just say that uh, the project actually started um, 2010. And uh, just, you can see here, again, these are blue cells. You don't need to input values here. And the calculations are actually pegged to these uh, uh, years that are indicated here. Let's just say that the uh, BRT is running 360 days per year, just to maximize the, the calculations. And we're done for the first part. 